Welcome to week one. In week one, we would learn everything about the business-driven uh, MIS, uh, Management Information Systems. And first things first, we have to know what is information. And then, so there's data all around us, right? And the, the data is just nothing unless we process it. And once we process this, uh, process that one now it becomes information and now that information becomes a valuable asset to business so they can make informed decisions and uh, so today literally every company functions with um, an information system meaning technology is all around us the impact is so great and it's enabling a lot of like startups from uh, before you need a lot of resources to uh, deliver a service and now you can just go AWS, Microsoft Azure and then now you would have a very uh, very uh, cost efficient servers to run your whatever applications you need either internally or externally, right? And a lot of companies have uh, posed themselves first as a, a business company you would say like and not a technology company. Uh, a good example with this would be uh, in the United States, um, T-Mobile. They are a uh, telecommunications company, but now they're rebranding themselves as a technology company instead. And you would see a lot of things like that, like uh, when Amazon started and they were just selling books and now they're selling everything, right? Back to the topic of data and information. And again, data is just, uh, anything that you get so let's say you look at your company and see hey uh, this certain person is not earning a lot for our sales team and then you now got that and process that in your brain and now that's information and you would think ah that guy we should fire that guy but again if you want to dig deeper more and uh, analyze the data is is that you might see that this employee might be your best employee and he's just having a rough time, maybe a family issue or something. And maybe, so there's a lot of maybes that you won't know unless you find further and go deep down deeper into the information. Data, it could be unstructured or structured. Um, again, getting a lot of uh, messages that's unstructured and then uh, structured data would be coming from, let's say, um, stock prices, things like that. And with data right now, we have this data deluge that we have a lot of data. And we call it big data. And now the problem is, is we have too much information. What do we do with it? And that's why right now, enter cloud computing. It did help a lot of, uh, to help us like, get more uh, data process with the cloud computing as well. Quickly recap how is inf uh, data is being used or information is used in the business. So again, a simple information would be like, oh, okay, um, I have a department, I have like a bunch of analysts who are processing raw data, let's say financial information and putting them in the database. Now that immediate manager would know, okay, this person is processing this amount of uh, companies. Like let's say he can process five companies in one hour and this guy can process 10 companies in one hour and now this manager would now create a report and that report he would report to this um, higher manager to say that hey these are my productivity levels and again report is just a document containing data in an organized manner like you just put in a table charge or whatever right and as you go higher to the management, um, you should get more business intelligence out of it. And um, you can use a lot of tools like Tableau, Power BI, and those stuff. And now you can create a story out of them. And now the higher level management can just look at it in the dashboard and say, okay, I know what's happening. Now I can decide. Talking about business intelligence, we definitely going to talk about analytics as well and there's three kinds um the descriptive the predictive and prescriptive the descriptive is again historical data let's say you're you're looking for a public listed company is looking at their historical information uh if are there and then analyzing are they liquid enough or maybe uh, are they able to pay their debts or do they have a lot of cash and then now you would have predictive analytics in such a sense that 
you can now estimate how many sales that they can generate for the future quarters or the, for the next year. And now with prescriptive analytics, you would now have uh, like services that would say, okay, this company is a buy, this company is a sell. So it's it prescribes for the user what it should or should not do. We talked about data, we talked about information, we talked about business intelligence. Now let's talk about knowledge. Uh, knowledge, as you may know, is something that you learned and now you can tell you can say that is also true experience let's say you have a senior analyst or senior developer in your team and that's part of what we call intellectual capital and then the thing is we have to uh, consider them as assets as well we call them knowledge assets and we have to take care of them the knowledge in such a sense that what if you have a senior um person in your team and then suddenly he left so that's why we have to take care of knowledge assets and make sure that we create a knowledge base for the team for the company for uh, in the unlikely event that uh, the person leaves again this is for contingency and it, it's hap it happens all the time and now it's good that we're not dependent on that one person